Welcome back baseball fans. This video is eliminating the Chicago Cubs. Uh, backs against the wall they produced against the Cardinals. Won four out of six games. It just wasn't enough to keep their season going. They finish in fourth, which eliminates them. Uh, they rallied at the end of the year, did well, but overall they couldn't overcome the mistakes from early on. When we look at the uh, stats, one of the things stand, that stands out is that the uh, pitching... Starting pitching was supposed to be good, and it really wasn't. Fergie had an area of 432, and that was the best of the starters. And the bullpen was supposed to be weak, and it wasn't that weak, really. And they had DRAs around three or below, but and they weren't used enough because of their, their cards were kind of scary looking, to be honest with you. So the, the bullpen and the starting rotation kind of flipped roles this year, and that doomed the Cubs. You know, Billy Williams had a fine year, but he could do better with that card. Beckert, you know, it's a 342 card. He could do better with that card. Uh, Jim Hickman had five homers, a 237 average. Stats just, you know, don't show a team that's really capable of challenging the Reds or the Pirates at the top of the division. So, with that, let's take a peek here at the Chicago Cubs cards and see who's coming out. And who's staying? We'll pull, of course, the 69 cards out of this. It's easier to do it this way. By um, looking at the 69s, there should be eight of these. We get rid of those. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight. They're gone. And these are guys are coming back to the Cubs. Looks like we got four pitchers and eight hitters. Yeah. Well, that bodes well as the Cubs are normally a good, better hitting team than pitching team. So, as it, as it presently stands, we don't have a catcher, but we think we're going to bring Randy Hunting back. We'll have... Sorrell could be a DH here, or maybe he can be cut for all we know. Banks can still play first. Beckard at second. Just add could... Oh, could play third, but we expect Ron Santo to come back there. Kessinger at shortstop. Interesting outfield, a good one. One of the guys is a fringe player, though. You got Billy Williams, Jose Ortiz. Could play center field. It's a nice stick. No glove. Jim Hickman. As far as the pitching goes, we got four guys. Hooten goes in the rotation. Pappas doesn't. You could actually move Gura to the bullpen. He was in the rotation this year, but maybe moving in, in the bullpen will be the better move. And we expect Fergie Jenkins to be one of the pitchers we bring back, of course. And that's what we have. So, it doesn't look too bad. If we keep bringing the guys back we have, we can reload and perhaps get better. So, let's see what the Chicago Cubs do moving forward. Okay, we got the Cubs roster here. We can go into baseball reference and take a peek at the at the futures of the players. Um, it's four and four, four hitters and four pitchers to analyze. And let's start with the hitters. The first hitter to come up is Bob Didier. One of two catchers we need to look at moving forward. Bob Didier. His 69 card was in play. It was his 20-year-old card at a young age, 20. Um, 628 OPS. He's got a 70 card. It's not very good. A 71. I don't think we have a 73 or 74 card. There's not enough plate, plate appearances. The 71 card. It's not very good. Well, they made the 72 card with 40 at-bats. We'd use it. I have a feeling they didn't make that card though. We can check that though. Going to the Super D site, which we've been doing throughout this process. Today we'll look at the 1972 original set. And the question we're asking about Bob Didier, did they make his Atlanta Brave card in 1972? So we'll scroll down to Atlanta. Bob Didier catcher, don't see it. Unless he's an extra player, we'll look there too. No. So Didier will retire him. He just uh, did not pan out as a player. We'll put him in the third category with one dollar amount. So Didier is a retiree. Next up, 
is Randy Hunley. We expect him to come back to be the starting catcher. And now we're just picking a year. Obviously, we're not, what we're not seeing here is his throwing arm. And I think his throwing arm was a minus three arm this past year with a 69 card. And he was an all-star in 69. The throwing arm will be the consideration moving forward. So 70, he hits 244. 71, he must have gotten hurt. He didn't play. 72 and 73, his batting average isn't very good. I have a feeling, though, that the Cubs will bring him back. And they'll, they'll pick his best split. None of them are particularly good. Instead of belaboring that point now, when the, the obvious stat that's going to be looked at is throwing arm. So we'll keep Randy Hunley, knowing that he'll probably have a good throwing arm in one of those years, and that'll be the card they pick. He's a keeper. Surprise keeper, you might say, because of the poor batting average. But Next up, Ron Sano. He's not going to go anywhere. He played through 74 for the Cubs. And now it's just simply a question of figuring out which year they pick. Uh, three All-Star years are coming up with OPS over 878 here and 72. It's probably 72. Um, so he'll be a keeper. So in Ron Sano, I'll put the uh, $10,000 unit here. In my notes, I'll just put 72 there. This column doesn't really matter that much. It's a comment column. It's just to remind me that check out his 72 column. Next up, Del Unser. Acquired in the offseason to fill in in center field. He didn't really have a history with the Cubs. Played a long career, though. Um, he was with the Phillies near the end. You see he bounced around. Uh, so the 69 Unser card with the Washington Senators was used. He's got a nice 73 with the Phillies. I say at this point he's a keeper, but he could probably be he could be trade bait also. But he's a keeper. Because he's a good defensive player, hits 289, and again, you have Jose Ortiz could use a defensive platoon. So Del Unser is a keeper for now. So things are looking good for the Chicago Cubs. Next up, Fergie Jenkins. But I just type in Ferg. Did he come up? Yeah, of course. Fergie, the Hall of Famer. 69 wasn't really that good a year anyway. He was 21 and 15. Surely he can do better than that. And in 1970, he led the league in whip out of buck 38. So we're considering again years 70 through 73. Yeah, it's just pick the year. That doesn't really matter too much. They're all about the same. And that's kind of good. You like having a superstar with flexibility so that guys who don't have that flexibility you have to pick that year. This way we have flexibility for Fergie to fit in in a year that there isn't a lot of options. So Fergie would be the fourth keeper. So it's gravy from here on out. And we have the Cub bullpen, the much maligned Cub bullpen to consider moving forward. Starting with Hank Aguirre. Had a long career starting in 1955. Hank Aguirre. 69 he was a Cub. And he gets, he's 39 years old. You saw him in game six. He pitched two great innings to kept, keep, try and keep the Cubs season alive. Turns out that's going to be the end of his career because in 1970 he only pitched 14 innings. So we have a second retiree. The great Hank Aguirre will be retired from the Chicago Cubs. And we have two more pitchers. Next up, Bruce Del Canton. Bruce Del Canton will be very young at this point. Pitches for the uh, Royals and Braves, name a few teams. He has a couple good years moving forward. Let's take a peek here. So very young, Bruce Del Canton was a pirate in 69. It's not glamorous, folks, but he's got workable seasons between 70 and 73. Um, mostly a starter, though, is where he finds his success. Oddly enough, when he goes to the bullpen, he's weak. Look at the ERA in a relief year, here and here. But look at, look at him as a starting pitcher here and here. So maybe the rotation is the spot for him. At least for the Royals, he was okay in 71 and 72. I think we need to put some guys on waivers, and this, this makes the most sense. First of all, if you look, he's not even connected to the Chicago Cubs. So I think he goes on waivers and he can continue his career with anybody. We're going to put a $100 value there for Bruce Del Canton. 
And lastly, Cecil Upshaw, another player who was not connected to the Cubs, but ended up here. He was a Brave. So we're looking at 69 Upshaw with the Braves. This is the card we're getting rid of, which is a nice card with a buck 24 ERA. Now, what's tricky here is he does not play in 1970, so he was on the disabled list. What that means is the Cubs cannot put him on waivers. All wavered players have to have a card in the first season coming up next year, which is 1970. So he cannot qualify for waivers. So he has to be a keeper or retired. 71 and 72, he's a pretty good reliever. Retiring a player is not, is not bad either, because you can come out of retirement. That's not a problem. So for now, because they can't put him on waivers, and because they like the other guys they have as keepers, he is a re he's going to be a, a retirement player. So what they'll have to do is Upshaw will have to be traded in the offseason. One of these retirees will have to be traded to create a waiver position on this team. The math suggests you have to have four keepers, two waivers, and two retirees. This number here adds the math up. It should be 40,202. There's 40,103. So that's the math that all teams need to get to before we do a draft in next year. So this is part of the trade carousel. It's not really a big deal. Teams move retirees and waiver guys all the time. Really, the critical column is keeper because this is what you're gonna build on. So the waiver and retiree column doesn't matter too much going into the uh, trade carousel in the all season. So that's a wrap for the Cubs. Future looks bright. Bad year, I, I see them coming back, playing better, getting back over 500 and seeing where they go from there. Thanks for checking out the Eliminating Chicago Cubs video. We'll see you next time.